what I came up to in my sewing room. All of these were laid out correctly in order the normal way I do it and it looks like somebody's been playing up here. So let's get started. Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to do Clue 8 with our Cotton Cuts Are You Game? There we go. And then let me see, let me show you what I have on the table. And just like normal, I have them lined up. Here is, I call this the cheat sheet, which is our sheet that tells us the colors and then and the alphabet. And I always put mine in alphabetical order. So I have A, we don't have any B this time. C is this really nice, pretty light aqua. D, E, and F. So let's get started. I'm going to take the... F and the E, and it says to make one, but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make two of these because we're going to connect them next to the C, which is, let me get it out here for you, which is this color here, and we're going to put it on the left. We're going to go ahead and do two of those, so I'm going to chain stitch that. Be real careful. We're going to be sewing on the bias. So take your time. My length is two and a half and my needle is a 12. Make sure you press it towards the F, which in my case is the darker aqua color. If you're going with darks and lights, it's towards the dark. When you're done, you'll have two that look like that, and then you're going to take them, you're going to lay them down, and you're going to take the rectangles and put them across the top like that. And we'll, I'm going to go ahead and do both of mine, so we make two of them, and we're going to label that section 8A. Alright, so now I'm, oops, I went ahead and I pinned these. The last one was pretty slippery, so these are both pinned, and I put my fabric, this piece here, on the bottom and pinned it because I want to watch this other side. And I don't recall if I said that you needed to iron towards the rectangle the last time around, or the C, whatever your yours is labeled or not, just so that you know. Because it was slipping and sliding all over the place the last time I was sewing it. So I thought, well, to avoid that, I'll just pin it. So it must need to be pinned a little bit. step to making our eight bees is four flying geese and this will make exactly four of them these are the fabrics we're going to use this is our E and our C's If you start out and it starts tucking under on you, you can put a little starch on that end. Take it out, starch it really, really good to make it stiff, and then put it back underneath there. That's what I do when I have a issue going on because it doesn't like it. I got these other ones pinned because for some reason they want to be real slippery today. I'm not quite sure why. Finished, you'll have four flying geese. Now we're going to put our D and our A's together in that order. You should have four of each rectangle. And we're just putting them together. I love the way this is coming together, really nice and fast.
turn them all open. You'll have four units that look like this. We're going to take our flying geese and we're going to connect them together just like that. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this one before we go on. Okay, so it turned out really, really good. And you're going to press towards downward, so you're going to press towards the dark. So when you get finished, this is what the underneath piece will look like. You'll have one going up, one going down. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make all four of these. But when you're done, you're going to make, I mean, you're going to label two of them 8B for 8. I came back because when I went to put this section here together this is the very next one I was doing and I was putting them together it was off a little bit so I went to look at the two last strips that I put together and I noticed I did not quite sew it enough so my first line is this one here and then I re-sewed it because it wasn't quite wide enough I'll go ahead and I'll take out this closest stitches to the edge here and now I'll pin it together but that's what you want to be careful of when you go to put them together because otherwise you're flying geese will make the next set of fabric that you connect to it kind of off or bubbly or it won't sit straight so it won't look right it'll always look off to your eye when you look at it so just take note of that when you're doing it just do each one separately if you have to and don't change stitch them or stop and fix them before you completely sta chain stitch all of them all right let's get these done and i went ahead and i pinned them so i'm keeping pretty well in order. Remember we're marking two of them as 8B because we have to add it to the last two. We have two little strips left in the fabric C which is the lighter aqua. Sometimes I wonder if I'm neglecting my leader enders, and that's why it acts up all the time. Because it wants me to put one on there. Although, you know, that's not true. Now let's iron these open. Now we're going to take these last two that aren't marked that are going to end up being our 8C, and we're going to put the little strip across the top on each one of them. Okay, let's do that, and then we're going to be finished. Besides marking them, if you haven't marked them yet. Now, this is the stage that you're going to mark right across here so that you don't lose your tip. So you want it to come right above it, so put your pen or your marker above it. Put your ruler on there, and then just go across. And then that's your sewing line on that. Because you want to make sure that you go across that line. If you go too low, if you go too far below the line here, you'll get your tip. It's okay if you go right across that line. You won't lose the tip on this goose. Now I've pinned it and I'm ready to sew it. And you're just going to take your time. And then remember, you're going across that line when you get up to it. No reason to be in a hurry. You should be able to see it while you're sewing it, so you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't have to worry about going over it incorrectly. Because even though you've marked it, you can still see it. And then we'll take a look at it. Let's take a look real quick. Okay, there we go. Here we go. We did not take off the tip, and that's what our objective is. Let's sew the next one. Okay, so now we're going to do this one different. Let's say this is the first time you've done this and you're not sure of yourself. Then what we're going to do is instead of starting at the end and coming out, go ahead and increase your length so that it'll be easier to take it out if you have to. Go ahead and come up to the part that you're going to cross, go across the tip of the whoops goose, and then you're just going to start sewing right here. You don't need to back tack or anything. Take your time. Sew it. Just like this. Go ahead and come all the way to the end. Because remember now you've got a larger stitch. So it's not going to make a difference if you have to take it apart.
then we're going to take a look at it before we continue. First thing I did was I took my pen here and acted like it was the stitch so that when I open it to take a look at it, it'll fold nice for me. And that's where I want to look at it to see. And see, that's just fine. No problem. I didn't take my tip off. So now I can turn around and go ahead and start at the top and come down. If I'm unsure, you can always come up here and come to meet it and then start at the top. It's going to be your preference as to how you want to do it. I'm just going to start at the top. Now, if you need to, or you feel like you need to go ahead and mark a quarter of an inch on your fabric, you can go ahead and you can do that from the very top all the way down the whole thing, just for this piece here where you've got this marked at the tip. It's not that you've got to mark the whole entire thing, and then I just come right over the top of it, not, did not lock it into place, and all I've done is gone over the same exact strip, so then I don't have to worry about locking it. There we have them all finished. There's our A, our B, and our C, and we have two of each. And I put a little two with a circle to represent two of them in case my pen gets dislodged. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more, click on the little bell. You can make a comment if you'd like. Subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. And thanks for watching, everybody, and welcome to all my new subscribers.